Hey folks, so let's talk about the Batman. So I was able to finally go see it this weekend. Went to an early showing on Saturday. Uh, got there a little bit early. And knowing that the movie was just a hair's breadth of three hours long, I opted not to eat anything or drink anything because I wanted to soak in the entire experience. And when all was said and done, and as as a, as I was leaving the theater, uh, a guy with his son, I don't know why, he decided to strike up a conversation and he asked me, what did I think of the movie? And I basically had two words for him. I said, not bad. And uh, he said, okay, and, and, and went on about his way. And I, ha I hated saying those words after I thought about it because I didn't want to give it a sense that it was, you know, bad and not, uh, uh, not enjoyable, you know. But at the same time, I'm not... I rarely do, oh man, this is the best thing ever. But after I thought about it, you know, for me, when I say use the term not bad as an initial response, that is basically my way of saying it was it was quite enjoyable. And that's pretty much how I'm going to, to put it like that. It I really found very few things wrong with the movie. Um, you know, like I said, it was three hours long. It was a little bit, a little bit too long. But at the same time, there was really never any point in the movie where, you know, I, I felt disassociated with what was going on. Uh, where, as I'm watching the movie... I felt, okay, this was absolutely unnecessary to be in this movie. Everything flowed well. Uh, there was a lot going on. You know, story, very rich story, very intense storyline. Um, you know, and so it just happened to be a three-hour story. And, you know, there's been other movies like that in the past where just it just ends up being three hours. Um ones right off the top of my head that I can think of would be, you know, Braveheart, uh, Contact, you know, movies where it just, at the, to tell the entire complete story, it ended up just being rather long. Now, I, I will say this, it didn't have to be three hours, and what I mean by that is, to tell the complete story that they told and ended up being three hours, but they didn't have to tell everything, all the stories in this movie in order to, to get what they were going across. There was a lot of plot lines and a lot of other things going on. And in order to wrap all those things up to, you know, to a satisfactory degree and ended up being a three hour movie. And I think probably the best way I can equate that is almost like, you know, a main story and a game and a few side quests, quite a few side quests. And, and, and the game ends up being 100 hours, where if you eliminated some of those side quests, you can have something a little bit more manageable. Um, and I think if they had eliminated some of those side plot points in the movie, you could have easily had something, you know, two, two and a half hours. And, uh... I will admit, you know, it is a darker tone film, uh, definitely, and I've, I've seen these comparisons, and I will have to agree that this was definitely along the lines of Batman Cross 7, um, that movie from 30 years ago, excellent movie. If you haven't seen it, uh, by all means, go see it, uh, but definitely along that level of, of tone, uh, dark. Uh, you know, there's, I won't say there's no humor in the movie, uh, cause there are definitely moments where you'll chuckle, but nothing along the lines of, 
you know, somebody stopping and, and having a moment of levity and, and joking a lot. Um, definitely a dark film. So if you have younger children, uh, they'll, they might have a hard time with this movie. One, with a dark tone, and two, uh, it would definitely... By the time you hit the, the two-hour mark, um, I'm sure the kids will start to, to fidget. Uh, in fact, in front of me was a young couple with four young girls, I would say, you know, younger than the age of 10. And right around that last hour mark, uh, the girls were starting to to fumble about because it's, it's a long movie. It's, it's a long movie. Uh, so that would probably be the biggest uh, negative of this movie. Uh, and probably the other thing that I had as far as an issue, and this is more of a personal thing, was this movie was definitely grounded in realism. And what I mean by that is, is th this was... When, when I watch superhero movies, I, I like my superheroes to, to have a little bit, a little bit more fantasy slash an un... It, I understand they're in the real world, you know, Spider-Man's in New York, you know, Iron Man is in New York or California or whatever, and I understand it's grounded in the real world, but a lot of times in those kind of movies, as soon as they become their superhero, a lot of the real world things really don't apply to them that it would apply to us, and one of the things here was, like when... Batman was in his uh, Batmobile chasing after the Penguin. They had to deal with traffic. Uh, and, and most car chase scenes, a lot of times, you know, both of them are weaving in and out of traffic, but traffic is really not a factor, right? Well, this one, traffic became a factor, you know, where the Batmobile actually got stuck behind two tractor trailers and just little things like that. Um... You know, when Batman uh, went to go investigate a crime scene, the crime scene is full of cops, and Batman, you know, walks in. You know, he has to walk in through the cops, you know, and the, one of the cops stops him and is like, hey, what, what the heck are you doing here? Where, you know, in, in other Batman movies, you know, there's a crime scene, and, and all of a sudden, Batman's there. It's that level of mystery and, and you know, it, granted, it's not real. You know, Batman just can't show up out of thin air. But at the same time, it, it was kind of cool. It added to the mystique of Batman. He's just there, and, and nobody in the room realizes he's there, and all of a sudden he disappears, and everybody can't figure out where he went. Well, here, he just kind of just walks in, and everybody's staring at him. And uh, so, like I said, that's more of a personal thing. Um, it was just a little bit too real, too grounded. Uh, one thing I, I have to praise about this movie is there's no origin story. I mean, and what I mean by no origin story, there's no Bruce with his parents seeing them, you know, get killed again. I mean, I, I don't know if I've ever expressed this, but one of the things I got incredibly tired of when with any movie with Batman in it, whether it was any of the Dark Knight movies or the Tim Burton or Joel Schumacher movies was, I think even Justice League or Batman vs. Superman, I think it was Batman vs. Superman, where they had to take a few minutes and show the the night, you know, Bruce's parents got killed. And I'm like, good lord, again. You know, and my argument was with Batman vs. Superman, I was like, if you know who Batman is, then you know his origin story. It's it's pretty much a given, and if you don't know Batman, that's that's perfectly fine. But we don't always have to see his his origin. It's absolutely unnecessary. One of the things I appreciated about the most recent Spider-Man movies was we just had Spider-Man. He's already here. All right, let's let's move along. And we've had three decent Spider-Man movies since. Um, we don't always have to go back to the night where they decided to become uh, their superhero. So that's that's one thing I have I have to give praise for. 
Uh, but all in all, yes, the, the movie was, was enjoyable. Uh, would I plan on seeing again? Quite possibly. Uh, three hours is a long time. And when you add it, you know, the ads in the, in the beginning, uh, it was about 10, 15 ads. I mean, not 10, 15, 10, 15 minutes of ads. Um, and then getting there in time to get, you know, whatever. I mean, you're going to dedicate some time. You're going to dedicate a good chunk of your day. And that was probably the other, the last, one of the worst experiences of seeing this movie. Um, is a lot of people in the theater would, you know, randomly check their phones. I understand, you know, we, we live in this world today where we're constantly checking our phones every couple of minutes, every 10, 15 minutes. But when you come to the theater, you know, put your phone on silent. And and I understand three plus hours of not looking at your phone is probably one of the most difficult things for people to do nowadays. But it's incredibly distracting um, in a dark theater when all of a sudden a little bright light shows up. Uh, that happened quite a few times in the movie. I, I would say at least anywhere from five to ten times. And it was very, very... Um, very very distracting and annoying so that's nothing against the movie but uh, it did hamper the overall experience for the most part so if, if you're one to go to the movies please <laughs> refrain from doing that but all in all I, I enjoyed it I'll probably see it again probably when it comes to HBO Max uh, I'll sit down and watch it again enjoy it for what it was I'm looking forward to a sequel uh, I enjoyed it that much, and uh, we'll see where it goes. Anyway, that's my thoughts on The Batman. What did you guys think? Did you enjoy it? Did you have a chance to see it? Let me know. Post in the comments below. And uh, if you want to hear more what I have to say when it comes to uh, movies, TV, whatever, uh, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys later.